right of the stage, uh, Mr. Nagaraj Krishnamurti, Chief of Strategy and Analytics Officer of Madison Media, who's going to be talking about the new perspectives in media planning. So let's give a huge, huge round of applause as Mr. Krishnamurti joins us on the stage. So what we at Madison, we 
did is we took this consumption cohorts and we moved the strugglers because strugglers are those who are uh, technically below the poverty line and therefore they will not be participating much in the consumption and we bucketed it into three buckets. So you have upper income who are roughly 15% of the household excluding the strugglers which is 245 million. They contribute 40 trillion of uh, consumption. Then you have mid income who are 65 million households which is 25%. And finally, you have no income, 144 uh, households, which is 60% of the total. So these are the important numbers. So 15% who are upper income, and then we have 25% who are mid income, and 60% who actually we are what we are labeling as the low income, and we have kept the strugglers out for this analysis. Now, what is the use of all of this is when you are planning your uh, marketing strategy, this could be one clear path to write your marketing strategy. For example, what we do is, in those kind of category in which the penetration exists, 60% are basically is a game of share gain, and you will be uh, talking to a mid and lower income, and that's by uh, default. Then in those uh, where you need to drive credit, uh, where you, for example, if two winners is already 43% penetrated. So the next uh, wave of growth, will happen when they target the lower income uh, people. And then you have certain categories where the penetration is only uh, less than 10 to 12 percent, in which you have a huge room to grow within the upper income category. This is one way to look at how we can use the income power. The other one is within the brands, what you need to do is, if you calculate the average, uh, this has just put some set of soap brands and have calculated the price per brand, and then you can see so some brands and the average price per gram out of this selected uh, sample is 0 0.4. Some of them are operating at a price which is much lower than the category and some are operating above the category. So those who operate within the category band will be taking the, uh, I mean those who are operating lower than the category will be going after the lower income and this is one way to use the cohorts. So it sounds great, so till now it was all very easy and we could say that cohort targeting uh, by income group makes a lot of sense. But that looks very really academic right now because we do not have a right mechanism for targeting consumption by cohorts. And why do I say that? One example that we can talk of is in terms of NCCS classification. We all know NCCS classification is a cross tab of uh, occupation uh, of the bureaus that you own and the education level of the chief uh, wage owner. And let me just illustrate that. So here's Akhnan Ramesh. His occupation is a shopkeeper. He earns around 25 to 30,000 per month. So by income, that cohort that I discussed in terms of consumption, he would be a next billion, up towards the lower end of the uh, consumption cohort. But when I do that in my NCCS classification, he is SSC pass or he has six euros, and not many of these euros are not unaffordable, and a shopkeeper would be having it. He becomes NCSCS A, which is at the higher end of this trade off. So here, here is a person, if I go by consumption cohort, he is at the lower end. I am not saying he is not going to consume, he is not a struggler, he will be consuming. But when I took it from the NCCS A point of view, he is at the highest end of the social strata that we define. Now, that is not going to be of much help to marketers. So what we did is, we devised how to be target. So this is more of not segmentation from an attitude and point of view, it is more from how do we target better in media. And we devised three routes to it. One is affluence, and again I make it actionable by seeing how we can use affluence from the media consumption itself. Then is life stage, and third is micro geographies. These are the ways you can target in media for the top funnel. So we have to understand that India is basically because of the huge bedroom that is there in terms of the penetration that we can uh, grow for in most categories. Much of the challenge lies in top funnel and we need to find a way in which we can improve the top funnel targeting and this is, these are the three groups that we will be discussing now. Now let's say the first one was what I said was affluence. The way you consume video in the past was restricted primarily to TV. Today it has got various flavors, so it starts with, uh, let's say the population is 143 crores, those people who access TV is roughly 89 crores. Then you have a whole set of new stream, OTT, that includes uh, YouTube, Facebook video on every other all the top options, that comes out of 47 million, uh, 47 crores. 
Then you also have a set of people who you access video through HD and has 16 Pro people. And then finally you have connected TV which is around 4 Pro people as we speak today. And all of them will, uh, will sort of agree that there is a certain amount of income differentiation that naturally exists. And let's explore that. Now what we set, set out first is, if you analyze the viewing behavior, we can actually uh, differentiate people by the heavy light and medium uh, consumers and this is what we just ran uh, recently. So if you see in 2019, and this is this is fairly volatile data, so we are just taking some averages and coming to some conclusions. 2019, you, you had 7% of the people who were not watching TV, and let's just focus on that step for the time being. That's because they were on vacation and it happens, even if you take any year in the past, you will always find certain people in any given uh, month or uh, whatever is your time period by variation, some of them will not be switching on TV. Today that percentage has gone to 11% and in between those serious volatility in the data, that's because you know people migrated from urban areas to rural or they went back to hometowns and then there was COVID uh, thing. But if I just take the last 8 week average, it looks at around number 11, and though it's early days to say that it has stabilized, we can broadly say possibly 4% people have become far cutters, that is they have moved out towards connected TV. And this analysis also brings the number to 35 million, and there are various other estimates which my colleague uh, Bushar will be taking in the future, that also sort of problem times. So what we have to understand is 4% of the you know, uh, TV audience are only have been could be possibly caught cutters in India. Then we will see how do they access uh, TV, that's the 96% of the people who are, rather how do they access TV, then basically you have four ways you access India TV. One is cable, which is the biggest chunk, 50%, 100 million households access it through cable. Then you have 32% of people accessing through DTH, and then you have 10% uh, accessing it through DD free dish. And that's sort of moving up and DTHK is coming down. That could again be a temporary uh, COVID uh, phenomena, but this is a broadly the landscape. What is more important is not the way they access it, the more important is what are the estimates we have for SD and HD phones. Sam in one of uh, his recommendations he said uh, HD channels are highly, highly underutilized by marketers and this bears it out. So we did an estimate based on the data that we have from PAR and we have from TRI and also from other DTH operators, the 43 million uh, households who subscribe to HD channels. And they, we would presume, are in the upper income group that I spoke about, which is basically the 3% of uh, households consuming 30% of uh, uh, consumption, because it sort of mirrors where the most of the consumption happens. It is highly over indexed on mega cities. It is a is again indexed on uh, larger cities. So what is the first thing that we do get a way of addressing the upper end of the segments is HD homes and the top cutters which, uh, which I estimated at 4% which we shall will be taking proof uh, in the near future. Then also you find that the uh, content preference of the HD homes if you were to analyze it separately versus what it is in HD homes is fairly very dramatically different. But what we normally in media we do is we do we do not take care of this concentration and we just go ahead and uh, just use the HD channels on our standard normal plan. The first recommendation is to actually plan for HD homes because their viewership is different. Especially if you are targeting the if you are uh, targeting those categories where the penetration is lower and you are uh, going after the large uh, high income groups. So, first point that I'm saying, that Samsung is highly under-reported because far if you go with the Samsung design, the mode of access of TV is not considered at all. So, they, they are perfectly right in not having a specific weightage for HD phones, so that results in a huge under-reporting. Another thing we need to understand is there's an optically poor rating of uh, HD channels. So, in the previous slide, for example, uh, I showed that the rating was 0.38, a simplistic calculation is 20% of homes are on HD homes, and if I'm only interested in the upper end of the segment, then I have to multiply by that by 5, broadly speaking, and that would be the actual rating of the uh, program within the HD homes, and then it actually becomes very effective and efficient. So if I'm going after the top end of the consumers, 
for example, I clear on H is only 40 percent. So all that I and if I'm after the upper end of the consumption where the consumption percentage is per capita consumption is high, then it makes a lot of sense. The second thing that I would talk about is at the extremely other end of the spectrum, which is the uh, lower income. And here we can see GD free dish, and GD free dish is growing at a phenomenal rate, and that's because many people are moving away from cable to free dish. And especially in certain markets, which is which what we would call as the in the heartland. Here again, if you see, and here in actually in uh, you can evaluate on uh, HD homes, by, I mean on uh, uh, FTA homes, you will see that <coughs> if you take Hindi TV channels only on the Hindi speaking markets, so there are a lot of brands for whom that's a core market. On many when you do that analysis on the total homes, it gives you around 800 GFPs. But the same thing if you went to evaluate only on FTA homes. It dramatically shoots up to 2642. It's the same plan, but it's just that the base we are doing. Obviously, we don't expect when I advertise on a FTA channel, I don't expect a guy who doesn't have an FTA channel to watch it. And therefore, this is the right to evaluate. What it also tells us is, like I said, the bulk of our consumers are in also, I mean, the size of each of the signals are very important, but here is a very actionable insight. If your brand is after the lower end consumers, especially in Hindi or brand, that's not in the small budget of six crores, you can actually maintain a very high level of activity across the years. And also, cricket on really does make sense, and a lot of people are moving on towards the FTA channel. So, there are two points that I made with regard to the access. The one was if you're going after the high end consumers, then you have a better targeting option in history homes, and if you're going at the other end of the spectrum, you can use the FTA channels. Next, I talk to life stage. So what do you mean by life stage? Let me just explain. So what we did is, we took all the adex, and we don't have very reliable data for digital, so outside of digital, we took for all the adex expenditure that happens in the last three years, and across each category, and there are here around 565 categories uh, uh, which have been listed, we told them, we sort of gave each category to a specified audience. For example, if it's a kitchen or a home uh, category, then it would be at the homemaker, soft rims and even digital first business we market as you and the remaining like for example BFSI and OTC we put it as all adults and the others would be business and other small uh, other categories which does not come into any of this sharp uh, thing and we check what is the advertising expenditure that typically happens and this is outside of digital. So roughly 38 percent goes to homemaker, 27 to you and 21 percent goes to all adults. And let's just go to these three segments and let's just understand. First, we will start with the housewives. One thing that we need to understand again is the participation of women in uh, labor participation, that is, who are employed, is the lowest or the second or third lowest anywhere in the world. And that's actually quite a shocking data. So, if you see Vietnam, it is at around 72 percent. In USA, of 55 percent of uh, women who are over 82 years, they do go for unemployment. Whereas in India, only 23% of uh, women are actually employed. So this sort of gives an uh, insight that we cannot be actually mirroring what is happening in the other parts of the world directly because our demographics as well as our uh, uh, things are quite unique to India. And probably, uh, this is my hypothesis, one of the reasons why the exam was showing in all other countries the TV percentage is much lower, but in India it is still higher because of this particular Probably this is one insight which sort of tells why TV in India is still quite good. And also, if you just back calculate this with IRS data, you will also find that 68% of women who are about 22 are uh, not working and not studying, and therefore, we can consider them to be homemakers. Now, it's well known, and the data also shows that women by and large are heavy consumers of TV. So, if, uh, if your brand is actually targeted at homemakers, then TV still remains to be a highly potent media and might be unique to uh, India because even compared to our South Asian neighbors, our uh, participation of women in uh, labor market is much lower in India. So TV still remains potent as long as you are targeting only the women and that's because it gives a high reach and obviously the CPM is lower. That does not mean that we are saying it has to be completely TV since we should actually also use social and digital one to reach the hard to reach uh, women as well as to contemporaryize brand and uh, e-commerce which currently on a grocery is only 3% will be expected to grow further. So this is how you could actually 
have it within your media by going by the income cohort and also in, in particular about whom you are targeting here very sharply the uh, women. Now let me come to youth and this is very interesting. I think again India is very different from all other markets because in most markets, at least the most advanced markets, they have an aging problem. We are actually the power of youth because 65 per 60 percent of Indians are under the age of 35. And that that's, means we have an immense potential and there's a lot of plans which can be added to youth and we need to see how we can uh, harness that potential. First observation is unlike other, uh, so this is a very interesting chart, so we need by age cohort what is the media consumption and the first thing that stands out is the older you are, less types of media you consume. So for example, the silent generation which are basically the senior citizens, you have 41% of them can be accessed by using only one media. As you go down millennials and gen Z, which are actually the younger age cohort, they are more comfortable, they might be spending less time per media, but they are actually consuming more media. And therefore, by default, whenever your, your brand is youth centric, you need to be multimedia just to ensure that you reach that. Second most important observation, Again, compared to different from other cases, we are a single TV homes, and that leads to some kind of interesting India specific uh, observations. Let us take co being. Co being is people with whom you are watching a TV program. So, this is a grid where on the uh, axis here you have male 0 to 2 means male uh, person with whom is he co being. What is very interesting is if you go to uh, males 22 or 30, Actually, the bulk of his uh, co-viewing, he's watching uh, much of his uh, TV along with his mother who is in the age of 45 to 50 and that goes up when he is at 31 to 40. Though, then you can also see that he is also co-viewing with his partner because that is 29 percent. But actually, most of the time, he is uh, co-viewing with his mother or his mother-in-law because the percentage goes up very high. And this sort of shocks you if you actually see you are a youth brand. You want to target to youth in his or uh, her uh, specific relevance, but most of the time if you use TV, you are actually ending up in an environment where he is uh, sharing the viewing behavior with his mother or his mother in law. Now, even more interesting is that actually the co viewing with uh, the specified uh, uh, partners actually increases in the prime time. So, most marketers that I speak to, they say, what is the percentage of prime time, even if they are uh, actually targeting you. <coughs> what this clearly shows is the more you go to youth, with your target audience is go youth, and the more you advertise in prime time, actually you are only going behind the ratings and not much of uh, relevance. Assuming in Kobe, he uh, will be much more at attention when he is so to speak. In our analysis of this analytics, therefore, over across many studies which are youth centric brands, cricket and off prime sports they actually do well. For example, interestingly, I was just uh, doing an analysis of Spotify. They have uh, used all sorts of titles in the non-prime time and there seems to be doing quite well. And cricket, we know why there is such a huge uh, thing. Intuitively, all digital first brands and youth centric brands understand this and the weightage on cricket is so high. So, the learning is, you can't have one master template. Uh, for example, you know, certain brands use a certain mix of channels. I just do it the same way, it just doesn't work. Because here in Sunday, you have to be doing everything else for that uh, large intensity, like which it doesn't uh, does. Now, I also said that when you are going to youth, we need to have multiple channels. And if assuming in the top funnel, much of that will be on video, there are two ways actually you can combine the linear TV, which gives you high reach. Like I told you, the still the people who watch TV is quite high. Or two bases, one is called CPIR, that is cost per incremental reach, and the other is economic reach. So on a cost per incremental reach, what you do, and uh, like Sudhir was just saying, it becomes an algorithmic pie, so you have a campaign budget, let's say, of 4 crores, and the algorithm will split it into small chunks, let's say, of uh, uh, 4 lakhs each as one chunk, and it will first go on pie, uh, it will find out which of the three options, let's say, uh, linear TV, Facebook video is going to just to give an example and it should go on iteratively finding out at every chunk that it buys which is adding an incremental reach 
We know in India we don't have a single kind of data, but there are very pro robust probabilistic methods in which you can act in incremental reach, and then it will go on keeping and doing it here, and finally you will get a maximum reach for the given budget, and that's what is called as a CPIR. Now there are advantages, the advantages is basically you are reaching lot more people for the given budget, but you are also reaching for certain advantages of digital, uh, which is targeting, and also you are comparing TV and digital in one trade. The advantage on TV, like I showed you in Covid, is actually it meets multiple audiences, or the spillover is very high on TV, and there is no spillover on digital. So, for example, if you are a fog, and actually you will be surprised that a lot of fog users actually come from the older age group, and if you are very targeting on digital on youth, you will be losing out on that opportunity. In CPR algorithm, we have to go deeper, and we go ahead, and that's one big flaw. But otherwise, in terms of reach, it will be maximized. The other way to do it is through econometrics. In econometrics, we model for outcome. So the econometrics today is fairly well advanced. So if we get the data of uh, final outcome, and we have the data on TV spans and digital spans, and capturing certain other variables, we will be able to build what is called, what are called as multiplicative models. I don't want to get too technical. What it means is the interaction between one medium and the other medium is built into mathematics. And then once we build the model, we can simulate, and we'll be able to find out what's the best uh, ratio in which the simulation happens together. And so that will take care of all the other things, uh, including co-viewing and TV, uh, targetability in digital, and it does not hit you um, to miss on one up against the other. And typically, if I do like this across various models that we build, and this keeps changing. So the 1730 is as per today for most of the youth brands that we have done, it's around 1730. And more it can even change as the digital reach goes higher. And also it depends on each market specific the conditions. Then the third point that I wanted to discuss was is about microcarbitals. And why do I say microcarbitals? So if you take what I've done is I've brought in three charts. The first chart is for ceiling fan, where the penetration is very high in about 90. And you can see under each dot represents a state. So for example, there's a dot per D and there's a dot per U, P, Maharashtra, each of that is the state. You see, you will see that in a highly penetrated category like ceiling fan, the population dispersion and the product category sales more or less are in line. But then let us take other uh, category which is fridge, which is at around 34% penetration, the line is not so consistent. So there are some states which are over-indexed and many other states where the population is high, it is under-indexed. And if you take cars which is even less penetrated than in our fridge, you will see that the differences becomes even starker. So what the point here is, some of the western models assume, you know, the purchasing power is equal, which might be true, but here we also have various conditions because of which each state are getting even a state, for example, if you take UP, which has a huge population, not all of UP have the same purchasing power. Western UP in general has a higher purchasing power than uh, Eastern UP. So how do I account for all of this while I do targeting? So we have a framework called Madison Common Factory. It takes three parameters. For example, ability, which includes uh, variables from RBI like the per capita bank deposit by at every district level. So this is done at every district per capita bank deposit, per capita bank branches, and also the employment structure. Like I said, employment structure is a very good proxy for consumption. Then you have awareness, including the reach of internet, and then you also have affordability where we can change that. This is the category that we are doing for, for example, consumer durable, house ownership, vehicle ownership, is a general standardized thing we take at every district level. So if I do this, then what I get, for example, is that there are uh, roughly around uh, 740 districts uh, today and we have data for 640 districts in our system, we will be able to identify 192 districts where the consumption power is much higher than an average and actually it occurs for 70% of consumption on an average if I take those standard parameters. And what we normally suggest to market us is these districts you need to do a specific hyper-local uh, targeting. Actually, this approach well, is quite well recognized. In fact, if you were to see the Tokyo's uh, India Special Edition, there's a mention of this uh, framework that uh, we have come up with uh, 
and Madison called Madison Power and Country. So, what again, like uh, what it does is it pursues market business potential and also media homogeneity. Like I said, India is uh, you know, every 100 kilometers it changes. So, that uh, homogeneity is also built into the system, and then in the system, we also have guardrails and tools so that you can go ahead and act activate hyper local media scale. So, for example, some of the tools that tools come with information. For example, you'll be surprised that in certain parts of Western UP, uh, actually the YouTube integration is much higher than TV and typically if you were to build a plan, uh, TV would saturate in certain markets of UP and you would end up spending a lot more money. But if you were to use the way of um, video planning where you consider TV and digital media as one, YouTube will do better. Also you know that in certain markets, especially the smaller ones that short form videos do well, and also by platform, we'll be able to know what is the, what are the short form videos that do well. And third uh, thing, print, actually the language print is quite important in certain markets. So we also have every edition level which, uh, for each of the districts, which editions you need to buy. So, for example, instead of buying all of the editions, you can actually buy specific editions if uh, the potential of those markets are high. And what this eventually does for the marketer is you get a lot more hyper local at scale into those districts which we have shortest. So, this is uh, what I wanted to discuss today. So, let me just go back and sort of summarize what I spoke about. In India, actually, the thing that all marketers need to understand is there's a high amount of uh, disparity, and at the same time, the influence, the influence is growing up. To actually target in India, we need to do it on three axes. One is on mode of video access, like I showed you. Then there is a life stage uh, way of looking at it. For example, home, uh, house, uh, home, <coughs> housewives generally do consume a lot more TV, and your need of uh, uh, digital may be lesser there because they give you a lot higher reach. And then I also said if you are operating in a category which has low penetration and therefore you are going after the halves of the society, then actually we need to use the options like HD, which deliver much higher reach than even digital. And, uh, and those households which be 15%, 33% consumption, that's what makes a very good choice. Then we came to targeting uh, by the uh, life stage. So youth in India will be the biggest uh, consumption potential because they are the not only the youth who consume more, we are fortunate enough to have the 60% of Indians are actually they are under 30 and the such a huge consumption part. When you come and plan for you, please do not copy the same uh, template, let's say, of any other electricity companies. And but we most of speak about doing some of the learnings that we have is the effectiveness is very high on cricket, on off time, especially certain dollars. And more importantly, you need to add digital layer to it at start with 7030 and probably we can go ahead further and further. Then I said in certain cohorts we need uh, to look at video planning and not see silos, digital and uh, TV. And the two models uh, work as uh, Sudhi was saying, which is basically either CPI or economic, both are very robust funds. We can choose uh, whether, you know, if it's a mass based the product, then probably CPI will do well. And if we have certain things where we are trying to develop the category, then probably a economic model uh, should be used. And if you are uh, only trying to win share game, that means you need to have more higher savings. So probably you can go for higher reach and CPI model is what you need to adopt. And third and the last part is we need to understand that our size is so huge that to actually bring we need to see India not as one but as many Indias, and we have a basis in which uh, we will be able to do hyper-local targeting at scale, and that's something that uh, I just sort of demonstrated, and that's a good we have, which is called Madison Power and Country. So that's what I want to discuss about today, how there's a one trillion, one trillion, trillion opportunity which we as marketers in this room can harness uh, with better targeting. That's, that's what I Any questions?
might install a public TV sales and marketing class to kindly join us on the stage and give a memento to um, Mr. Nam Rajkishwaloni. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, on the stage, Mr. Namaraj Krishnamurti, joined by Mr. Alok Pandey.